Hey everybody, welcome to the cow, Church on Wheels. Many of you, uh, this is your church. So I wanted to give you something that will feed you today. And what I do is not normal, but there are a lot of people that do not go to church. They believe in God. I reach those people. And then there are a lot of people that because of COVID, they just absolutely don't go to church. I am a firm believer in a community of believers, but do you have to go to a building to make sure you're right with God? No, you don't. So, thank you for joining in. I'm seeing you guys chime in now. So, <clears throat> I had this thought, and this is going to be a quickie. I am in St. Louis today, and my voice is a little hoarse, so excuse that. It is absolutely amazing, and I think where this message came from... I had a meeting with one of my board members, James. Uh, he is the secretary of the board. We were having a meeting the other day and a guy came in to the office and he was like, where is so-and-so? Why do you need him? Well, I got bit by a snake. Okay. And he said, I wanted to know what kind of snake bit me. So he took this guy who knew the territory, knew the snakes, took him out to his truck, and he had the snake that bit him in a container in the truck <laughs> and he said that's the one that bit me what is it should I go to a doctor or should I not and of course I was just laughing my butt off that you're actually riding in a vehicle with the same thing that bit you. Then I got the message for this week. Why are you living so close to what has bit you? There are people that live life with things that have bit them and it's alive in them. And I began to study that out, that, you know, why do people love? And when I say love, don't take it to the deepest depth, but they ride around with hurts, how many of us in life just live with a hurt in a vehicle we're riding in? And the other day, I was laughing so hard. It's like, my God, why would you have the same thing close to you that bit you before. But then I realized, why do many of us just continue to let what we've been through hurt us? <clears throat> so I began to study that out. Why do people live with hurts and regrets and I did find this out through 
neuroscience and psychology that negative emotions have an addictive quality that trigger the reward centers in your mind. Just like when you do something good, it triggers the dopamine in your brain that causes your body to react. Negative emotions actually trigger those same dopamines. So you feel like you're rewarding yourself. Do you feel good about your bad? That's the wow. That's the cow this week. Do you feel good about your bad? And it, it was hilarious at that moment that he was riding with the same snake that bit him. But how long are you going to live with what bit you? You know, do you get rewarded by saying, oh, I went through it and boom, I got it. But are you bragging about conquering it or you can live with it? If you're encouraged by, because you can live with it, you haven't conquered it. I go back to the story <clears throat> and I called this session stress relief. And Sandra, you're watching. Thank you guys very much, Sandra and Donnie. I go back to a woman that was stressed out in the Bible. And there's no notes today. This is ad-libbing. This is Mark from the heart. I go back to a woman in John, I think it's the eighth chapter, the woman at the well. When she came out and Jesus said, give me some water, yada, yada. Jesus wanted all of Samaria to know the goodness of God, but he also knew he could not win all of Samaria. Even Jesus knew. Now, I want you to hear that. Sometimes you get stressed out because you can't win somebody over. Maybe that's not your job. Maybe it's not. Jesus, he wanted all of Samaria, but he did not go into Samaria. He went to one woman that knew the people in Samaria. Okay? And she gave him a drink, and he said, I'll give you water that the well will never run dry. It will be out of you like rivers of living water. He ministered to one woman. And then she turned around, went to the city, told all the people that she knew what Jesus had spoken to her. And then I began to wonder, what did he do that was so majestic it changed her life? And this was it. When Jesus told her, he said, go tell your husband. She said, I have no husband. He said, yeah, I know. You've had five, 
and the one you're living with now is number six. In other words, five is the number of grace. Six is the number of a fallen man. In other words, I know you think grace has run out in your life and now you've learned to accept it. That may be deeper than what you wanted on a Sunday morning, but he said, I'm the seventh man. Seven in Hebraic numerology means I am the completeness of life. I am the wholeness. I'm the finality. She goes to town and she tells people, man, come see this guy who accepted me. Okay? Now, we live in a society and thank you, Joe Biden and Kamala and the numb nuts, everybody's coming out of the closet. Just yesterday, I was looking here in St. Louis and people just want to rub things in your face. This is who I am. Why did they do that? Because it is the desire to be recognized. And when a person doesn't feel recognized, they don't feel accepted. That's the problem that we have. People have no identity. So we've got guys assuming they're female. We've got women assuming they're male. That's the problem. Why? Because it is the bottom line problem and issue of being recognized. So the woman, and I'll get off that political platform. So the woman went to the city and said, hey, come see this man. He told me everything I did, but yet he accepted me. When you can accept yourself for being yourself, when you can be comfortable with being who you are, you're going to show the joy of the Lord. Now, I know, and especially football season, and I see you guys chiming in. Oh, Clark, I see you, man. Clark is my buddy in North Oklahoma. Tell Cindy I said hi and make you a good breakfast. But we have been so adamant, just like at football season. You're going to see it. People standing at the end zones, holding up a sign, John 3, 16. Well, that's fine. Absolutely fine. But how many people have known the love of God because of those signs? And if you're one that does that, don't be offended. And if you can, you, uh, <laughs> you have an issue. But this woman went into Samaria and told everybody her story. That's where I come from the football games and John 3, 16 signs. We are trying to convince people of God's love by someone else's testimony. Why don't you? I taught a message years and years ago. Oh my Lord, I'm trying to think. 
and excuse me, I'm ad-libbing this morning. It was probably 25 years ago. I taught a message on write your own gospel. And I didn't know then or understand then what I understand now. But Jesus didn't go to Samaria. He found someone in the city that they all knew. And she went and brought the city to Jesus. Now, watch this. I always encourage people, don't be so hell-bent on quoting King James. Write your own gospel. I have a testimony of what I've been through in life. You have a testimony of what you've been through in life. We've all been through things. That is your testimony. I'm not saying don't read the Bible, don't study it. I'm not saying that. But so many people, how many times over the years have people talked to me and, and quoted a scripture and say, I don't know if I quoted that right. Does it really matter? Stop. And, and I want my religious friends to hear me. Stop treating King James like a god. Oh, my Lord. Stop it. People want to hear your gospel. How has God treated you? That's your testimony. You guys are so valuable because many of you watching, and I'm, I'm seeing you chiming in. I'm looking here. Justin... Yeah, Tilly, I'm sorry, I've got bifocals, so I'm, I'm trying to read these names. But you guys have a gospel. You have good news of what you've been through. Now, don't shut this off saying, Mark, don't believe reading the Bible. I do, but... I believe you are someone's witness because of what you've been through. So don't beat yourself up for all your mistakes. Use them as your gospel. And the woman went to the city, told all the men, come see this man. He accepted me for what I've been through. Do you realize Jesus did not say to a woman that's been married five times and now she's living with a guy, he never said, you need to quit that. That's messing you up. He didn't say any of that. What won her over? I accept you for who you are. I love you for who you are. Now, why could he say that? Was the whole city of Samaria one at that time? No. No, it wasn't. That was his desire to win the whole region of Samaria. But Jesus understood the law of the harvest. And the law of the harvest written by the Apostle Paul was, one sows, one reaps, but God gives the increase. See, 
I titled this stress relief because you relieve your stress when you realize you're accepted by God, but you relieve your stress also when you understand the process. Stop trying to make sure everyone is changed. Maybe, just maybe, you are the sower in the field. We love being the reaper, you know, being a word of faith guy, you know, charismatic, Pentecost, all that. Oh, I'm looking for the harvest. You can look for the harvest and some of you, do you hear me? Some of you need to understand if you have to see the harvest to get excited, you have totally misconstrued the power of God. Sometimes you're just called to sow. You have your greatest stress relief when you know your calling. Jesus was called to just sow into the woman. Do you hear that? He was just called to sow into her. Two years later, Philip, the apostle Philip, went back to Samaria and won everybody. So Jesus sowed the seed. Philip saw the harvest. God, I hope this is helping you. Because so many people, I just want to see my son do this, my daughter get this, my wife, my husband get here, there. Stress relief is knowing your calling. Use your own gospel. Stop trying to quote scripture. Use your experience with the goodness of God and sow that seed. If you see a change, that's awesome. If you don't, that's awesome. Because one sows, another reaps. Maybe you're just in the sowing season. Maybe, and, and some of you, you know, and I would say most of you watching me, you have a heart for people. I know you do. I do too. And when I was young in the ministry, man, everywhere I went, I wanted people to just get it and boom. I could see the results. But if you have to see the harvest to believe the seed, you are immature. And I say that bluntly, but I am running out of time on the cow. I just want to encourage you. Stress relief is this. Jesus went to a city of Samaria. He wanted the whole city, but he knew he couldn't reach the whole city. He found one woman that the city knew. He sowed a seed into her. Two years later, the whole city was won over to Christ. Do you realize sometimes just being good to one person can go on for generations. Share with people your gospel. People do not know the gospel of Matthew, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of Luke, 
the Gospel of John. When are you going to write your own gospel? Look, I've been through this, and God did this. That is your gospel. It may never be bound with leather, but the Word of God is not bound by leather. It lives in flesh. You are the living, walking Word of God. So understand the process and its huge stress relief. One area you may be sowing, another area you may be reaping. But if you can understand, it all works. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. I can be as happy planting as I am sowing. Over the years, I've heard so many people come back to me, which they'll come up to me and tell me who they are. And I love everybody. I don't remember everybody over the years. They'll say, Mark, you told me this years ago. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to believe them. I don't remember it. They say, this is where I am now. I was happy sowing. Someone else reaped it. So hopefully this morning you found some stress relief that you absolutely are content just sharing people the testimonies of what God has brought you through and how he has helped you. And you sow that, and you don't have to hang around for a sinner's prayer. Holy Jesus. You don't have to hang around for that. You just know, I sowed the seed. You walk off that the sower should be as happy as the reaper. And I'm trying to see, oh, Patty. Oh, my God. Yeah, you and Randy, tell Randy I, I said hi. It, it is so good to have you chime in on this. I'm going to be coming to D.C. area uh, sometime here in the next few months. We're still trying to finalize that. So I hope to see you guys. But anyway, I am, I am so glad you all chimed in. I hope this helped you. Don't stress out. Okay? Use your own gospel. Sow the seed. If they don't, if nothing happens, so be it. The seed's going to work. Only your ego will make you want to stick around to see the harvest. So, my word Control your ego. Control the ego. James, I see you chiming in. And I think this is the first time, actually, my I'm look I'm when I look up like that, I have bifocals. I can see names. So I see James. James, thanks for chiming in. Hey, you guys pest the pass these messages around. I appreciate it so very much. Go to the website, markshellministries.com. Uh, become a partner if you've never become one. And don't blow that off or take it lightly. And for all of you watching that are supporters of the ministry, this is how I do what I do because God speaks to people, and if you agree with the message and believe in it, you support it, and I thank you so very, very much for that. So, you guys have a blessed day, and don't walk in stress.
use your own gospel, you can be happy knowing what God has brought you through. They don't need the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They need your gospel, your good news. And when you do that, sow the seed, walk off. God will give the increase. You guys be blessed, and I will see you next Sunday morning.